from a place we're not allowed to reveal. It's the, 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 the Tom Micah Show. What is she doing? I never know what she's doing. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Right at our telephone number, you're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TOM. one 800 5800 Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. As you know, we generally don't talk about the front page news story on this program. Sometimes we do. Generally, we don't. Uh, But the story I'm going to talk to you about, uh, there hasn't been time to print a newspaper yet. It's the worst day on Wall Street in seven years. The Dow Jones average dropped 504 points. Now, you may think this has nothing to do with you, but it does. And I'll tell you what it is. The most points the Dow Jones average ever lost in a day was in October 1987, when the Dow Jones average lost 508 points. But back then, the Dow Jones average wasn't nearly as high as it is today. So the 508 points represented about a 20% drop. Uh, Today's drop represented 4.4%. Still a very big drop. Biggest one-day decline for the Dow Jones. And I'll remind you because you probably don't remember... Right after September 11th, 2001, the stock markets were closed down to prevent panic. Everything was shut down. Also, if you recall, the World Trade Center was home to many financial companies. And um, many people were wiped out. Many companies were wiped out that day. So they uh, kept the market closed for the next several business days, and reopened on September 17th, 2001. And that first day, after the uh, after the uh, markets reopened, was the uh, biggest one-day decline ever. Wow. Huge. Went down 4.9% that day. The S&P 500 closed at its lowest point since October 27, 2005. The Nasdaq lost 3.6%, its worst decline since March 24, 2003. Now, why did this happen? Well, let's make it uh, real simple for you. Some of the biggest names of investment firms on Wall Street. Companies like Lehman Brothers, over 150 years old. Lehman Brothers had survived the Civil War and everything else that came since. Lehman Brothers, gone. Merrill Lynch, essentially giving itself away to Bank of America. One of the biggest insurance companies in America, AIG, you've seen their TV commercials. They may be going out of business or be sold as well. And it's all happening at one time. This is all tied into the mortgage mess. The dollar is stronger. And as I told you what happens when the dollar gets stronger, oil prices are down. And oil prices are now below $100 a barrel. And that means, of course, you're seeing the gasoline prices dropping. 
but all this other bad stuff is happening around you. What is any of this going to mean to you? What is this going to mean to you? Well, I'm going to tell you. The government bailed out these two quasi-governmental companies. One's called Fannie Mae. One's called Freddie Mac. These are the two companies that essentially back all of the mortgages that are made in the regular mortgage market. Government had to bail them out. They're broke. S&P is cutting the debt rating on Washington Mutual to junk status because Washington Mutual has huge exposure to the housing market, which people like you know is collapsing. Lehman Brothers filed for bankruptcy. The chief market strategist for a company called Jeffrey's Company, Art Hogan, a frequent guest on the cable TV network, TV network CNBC, uh, he said the magnitude of the fallout in the financial industry is unprecedented and could only be compared to the Great Depression of the 1930s or the railroad bankruptcies of the 1800s. AIG is scrambling to find enough cash to stay afloat. And Washington Mutual, well, their stock price, as anybody who's invested in Washington Mutual would know, is in the single digits. It has dropped dramatically. And there are headlines saying, uh, just looking here online, WAMU on shaky ground. They got a lot of television commercials, but it says here they're on shaky ground. Lots of bad things are happening at one time, and you say to yourself, what does this mean to me? I'm going to tell you what it means to you. If you haven't already found this problem up until now, it's only going to get worse. Looking to borrow money? You're going to have to have absolutely sterling credit, or they're just going to say no. Whoever's left didn't care about your credit or file for bankruptcy because it was the easy way out, you're going to pay for it now. Getting a car loan, much tougher. Getting a mortgage has been much tougher, and it's going to get tougher still. Thousands and thousands of people will be laid off their jobs. I mean, just imagine a company like Merrill Lynch being sold. Why do you think Bank of America is going to buy it? Because they're going to do what they always do when they buy a company that size. They're going to what they call achieve efficiencies, which is just Wall Street for they're going to fire people. And those people being fired, it, the whole effect of this is going to fan out across banks, across financial companies. And eventually it's going to make its way to whatever business you're in. Barely hanging on at your company. That branch is going to get chopped out from under you. Imagine what it's like when people like you lose your job. You thought, hey, you know, I'm not the best person here, but I'm not the worst. And, you know, as long as I show up every day and clock in, everything's going to be all right. Maybe not. And all these years I've been telling you to get an education, to make sure you've got as much in the way of education as you can stand, as many degrees as you can pile on. Trust me when I tell you, the unemployment rate is now the highest it's been in six years. The highest it's been, hear me? The highest it's been in six years. And it's only going to get worse. Now, I could just ignore this and do a show, but, you know, along the lines of what we would normally do. And don't worry, I'll get around to that, because, uh, you know, uh, at some point you're going to need me to take your mind off this, and I will. But not until I put your mind on this. These stories that seem like they're so far away because they come from Wall Street, they're going to affect you. You are already affected by the bad economy. But now... It's going to get a lot worse. Where else is it going to affect you? Well, in the short term, in your 401k, your IRA, your 403b, whatever your retirement account is, 
You take a look at a statement, you're going to see it getting pummeled. September 30th is the end of the third quarter of 2008, and that's when the statements are prepared. That's just a couple of weeks away. It's going to look like you lost your shirt. Just letting you know. And those of you people who had a very lackadaisical attitude have called this show when we talk about money. Ha <laughs> ha, Tom, what's the big deal if I pay late? Ha <laughs> ha uh, You're all going to get now what's coming to you. All of you. All of you thought you didn't need an education. You're going to get what's coming to you. Many people listening to the sound of my voice right now are going to lose their jobs or not be able to borrow money to buy a car or not be able to borrow money to buy a used car, not be able to refinance their mortgages, not be able to buy a house, even though you've been waiting all these years because you don't have enough money to put down and because there aren't enough banks willing to take the risk. One of the things I heard about uh, banks giving out mortgages is the fact that many banks are going to be shy about giving out any new mortgages because... The real estate market has changed so much and prices are dropping so fast. Banks and financial institutions are not sure that they can accurately calculate what each piece of real estate is worth. Now, when you buy a house, they ask you to get an appraisal or the mortgage company will arrange an appraisal or two appraisals or three appraisals or whatever. There are some banks now saying they can't even trust that because they're not even sure if any of the estimates can possibly be accurate. That's how fast prices are falling. Things are bad. Financially, bad. Now, because I talk about money on this program, I could just, well, I could simply ignore what's happening today and have some frothy fun here on the radio, which I love to do, and I will do. How could I ignore this? This is big stuff. Big. And you wise asses who have been ignoring my advice, you know, skipping college, skipping high school graduation, skipping through community college, studying beautician, uh, how to be a beautician or whatever, you're the people who are going to get hurt the worst. It's going to hit you hard. And you know what? You're the people least likely to read the paper. Least likely to pay attention to a story like this. You're going to find out the hard way. So I thought better you find it out from me than find it out down the line. Now, you may have some comments. You may have some questions. Again, I am not a stockbroker, not a banker, not an economist. I'm a layman. I read a lot. I've had a lot of Muslim money invested over the years. In advance of this calamity, I withdrew a lot of the funds that I had invested. I put them in a piece of real estate, and now I'm very happy I did that. But I must tell you that also uh, I have stayed in the market, and I have continued funding the remaining mutual funds I have through my IRA, through my 401k, and the ones I invest in directly. Because... Um, I remember the crash of October 1987 when the market dropped 508 points in a day. I remember it. And it's where I learned my lesson about the stock market because I tried getting out at a time similar to this. And I ended up losing thousands of dollars as a result. And many people became billionaires merely by buying when everybody else was selling. So... I thought it was important for me to mention this to you and to give you an opportunity to react to it. It's going to affect you. It's going to affect you even if you don't own stocks, even if you don't own bonds, even if you don't own mutual funds, even if you don't have a retirement account. It's going to affect your ability to get a job, to get an apartment, to buy a car, to buy a house, to buy a condo. It's going to affect your ability to find a job. All of it. And I thought it was important for me to bring this to you today and for us to talk about it a little bit. 
So uh, let's get started. Tom Like It. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. Like It. It's like I want to meet somebody, see if she could get into me and just uh, take her home. And then you can get into her. Exactly. It's the Tom Like It Show. Yeah, the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5-800-TOM. It's our telephone number. Yep, I told you the story. What a day. What a day, what a day. The Dow Jones average today lost 504 points. Biggest one-day decline for the Dow Jones average since the day, the first business day following 9-11. Wow. Now you think that won't affect you. Okay. 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Jordan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How are you hello. doing? I'm doing okay. Great. Um, I just wanted to ask you a question. What do you think about investing in precious metals like gold or silver? Well, my first recommendation to you recommending that uh, regarding that is this. You don't want to uh, to make that your entire investment. In fact, um, do you have other investments? Um, not not currently at the moment. I would that would not be my first investment. And in fact, my first investment, as I always tell you, would be to pay all your bills. Oh yeah, that's not a problem with me. No, yeah. I mean, no, no. But before you invest in anything, make sure your debt is zero. Mm-hmm. All your debts zero. So you have no car loan? No car loan. I own my car straight out. You have no Visa, MasterCard, or American Express bill? Nope, just paid them all off. All right. So you have no bills at all? No bills at all. Okay. Uh, my recommendation to you, how, how much money do you have put away? Well, I just I just signed up with the Coast Guard, and I enlisted, and they're giving me a $5,000 bonus because of, my college, because of my college credits, and I was thinking about investing that. I wouldn't invest that in gold, son. Okay. No. I would I would do with that. The other thing you need at this time is a minimum of six months of money to live on. Okay. In a place where it's safe. Yeah, and be- uh Okay. Sorry. No, that that would be uh a place where you are insured by the FDIC. Meaning a bank. Mm-hmm. So you want to find the bank that pays the highest rates yet you want to find one that is uh, not at the very top of the list because those seem to be the ones that go down the tubes. IndyMac Bank, <laughs> they were at the top of the interest rate list. Then they went south. So you want to find out which big bank, which major bank, insured by the FDIC, um, you know, will uh, will give you the best interest rate. Well, actually, I should have a checking account with Washington Mutual right now. Washington Mutual is one of the banks that's in trouble. Yeah, I know. And so, you know, I've been thinking about maybe pulling out, maybe going to Citibank, perhaps. Uh, well, yeah. Now, here's the thing. Um, Wash, you know, Washington Mutual, if all you have is $5,000, Washington Mutual is insured by the FDIC. Even if they went out of business, you'd get your money back. Okay. All right. So I wouldn't make a move to Citibank for that reason and take less in interest. Oh, okay. If I were you, I would try to, uh, uh, again, you would want to look at several banks. There is a good website called bankrate.com. Go there, and you can find the best interest rates in your area. But make sure and check so you know that the bank is a bank, and it's insured by the FDIC. Okay, cool. Do not put that money into one investment like gold or platinum or uh, coffee futures or oil or any of that. Okay. Keep your money safe. Now, do you know how much you spend in a month? Uh, usually my credit card bill is pretty low. So. No, I mean, how much is your you know living expenses? Rent, food. Oh well, actually, I'm going to be living at the barracks, so rent, uh, you know, rent and food is covered while I'm still getting a paycheck from the military. Right, and they're not going out of business. Nope. But you still should have money put away. And finally, son, uh, and this is just common sense that you won't get from the Wall Street Journal, 
Don't get married. <laughs> don't be knocking anybody up at a time like this. I'm not kidding. Oh, absolutely. I've been a Lycus listener for a couple of years now. I, I yeah. Know, yeah, I know the lingo. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, be careful. This is not, not the time to be getting into that kind of trouble. You're absolutely right. All right, can you take me out African tribal style, Tom? I certainly can. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. And um, the market down 508 points today. And I don't care if you have no investments. It's going to affect you. You might lose your job. You might not be able to borrow money. They might take away your credit card. <laughs> it's bad, folks. Edgar on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom, Tom, listen. Uh, I was just hearing the advice that you were giving the other guy. And, man, you know what you're talking about, buddy. I've been you there, know. and I've been doing this for a long time. That's great. That's great. Listen, I, 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 I really have to agree with... The advice that you just told the young cat. Most uh, most uh, guys our age, and I'm and myself, I'm 23, going to turn 24 in December. Um, we're not well informed. Uh, however, I am. Now that six month rule that applies to everyone, no matter what age you are, no matter what it is that you're doing, no matter what kind of lifestyle you're living. In order to invest, you do need to have at least six months worth of life support, pretty much. And uh, and then that's great. But anyway, um, listen, Tom. I just I just graduated. I uh, I'm an engineering student, and I've uh, I've been saving up money from my previous uh, internships. And I'm at a point right now where I, I have been a little bit scared to throw myself into the market. However, everybody's demise is always somebody else's hope. So my question is. Should I invest and take advantage of the people that are selling their stocks uh, at this time? Well, I wouldn't do it all at one time. Well, that makes of course, of course, that makes sense. That and and obviously not buy you know everything of one of, of, of one item or or one description or whatnot. You have to you have to be really really uh, general and you know put your put your foot into each and every single pool you get into if you know what I mean. Now, I mean, I mean it's, you, you realize the market, in my, in my opinion, and in the opinion of a lot of people that I've been hearing, this is not the end. It's going to drop further. That, that, that's true. That's true. I agree. Um, however, uh, earlier you, uh, to the gentleman that you were just speaking with, you also told him, not, uh, the gentleman that wanted to, uh, to invest in gold or whatever he wanted, precious metals, I believe you said, um, you, you mentioned to him not to invest in oil. Now, it, it's my understanding that we're not going to have any alternate fuel for quite some time. In, uh, in the engineering... Uh, I didn't engine say that everybody shouldn't invest in oil. What I said was he has $5,000 to his name. And it's not a good idea to take $5,000 and say, I'm putting it all on oil, like you're, like you're in Las Vegas. That's true. Okay. In that sense, in that sense, I do agree. But um, I, do, I do believe that oil is not going to be something that's going to come back down to uh, $2 back in... Say nineteen, well, was it two thousand two, two thousand three? I vaguely remember. Um, I, I, really well, I don't know that. if you've noticed, but uh, oil, uh, the price of a barrel of oil is down about thirty yeah, percent over the last few weeks. That, that's true. That and and that's kind of the main reason why I, why I started uh, I started thinking about whether I should call you or not to to find out because I I, I have kept that into notice and you know oil since oil being a commodity it's always going to have to be in use. And like I was telling you, in the engineering field... Yeah, but here's the thing. You can't treat this like you're investing for the short term. No, uh, no, I, I, I agree. I mean, are you prepared to put a little bit of money into the energy sector over a 20 or 25-year period? I am. Every I, I, month? I actually, I actually uh, have a pretty stable job, and uh, it's, it's, it's affected by the market some way, but not totally, and... Fortunately, we just got a new contract, so that means we're going to have uh, work for about another seven years. Well, what do you do? Then, what do you do, Edgar? I, I work. I work uh, for a general contractor. Uh, but what what do you do? I'm a project engineer. So, do you have an engineering degree? That's correct. Okay. 
Um, yes. Well, if I were you, uh, but, well, by the way, you say you're guaranteed work and uh, maybe you've got a great uh, contract, but what if you were building buildings for Merrill Lynch right now? Oh, or Lehman was... Brothers? Oh, nothing they're, is they're... guaranteed. Just remember this. Right now, nothing is guaranteed. Okay, I'll definitely keep that in mind. And that um, means you can't make plans based on, don't get fat and happy and think, well, I've got another seven guaranteed years. Because, you know, there are a lot of guys at uh, AIG and Lehman Brothers and uh, Merrill Lynch who thought they just had to get through a few more years, they'd be retired. Or, well, you know, uh, uh, Wall Street is having problems, but not me. I work at Merrill Lynch. Right. And where are they now? You Funny thing you mentioned that we actually uh, our uh, our subs we uh, they they get uh, they have they're insured by AIG. That's uh, funny you should mention that. I was uh, I, I noticed you mentioned that earlier in your segment as well. Um, Gotta pay attention to this stuff. I'm telling you, I know that the average listener thinks this is not important to them and will not affect them, and they are wrong. That's that. Those are the people that are going to sit down and it's going to hurt them so much and wreck them that they're going to be crying for the rest of their lives. By the way, this is not the end. Yeah, yeah. It's going to hey, get Tom. worse before it gets better. Hey, Tom. So, so yep. back, back to my question. Uh, be very diverse into uh, be very diverse into what what you uh, you invest in. Any other suggestions that you could throw at somebody that has about a good maybe twelve and a half to fifteen grand to invest? Wait a minute. Does that mean you also have six months of emergency uh, uh, funds? Yeah, yeah, that's that's including my six month emergency fund. No, 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 no. Well, the point is, then then you have nothing to invest because how much do you? How much is your budget in a month, approximately? How much do you spend on uh, rent I'm, I'm and sorry, food? I'm, I'm I'm sorry, I'm in excluding. I'm sorry, I apologize. I'm okay, so you all you so sorry. you have six months of money put away. Yes, yes, I have that, which covers my food, my my electric bill, my gas, my. I, I don't have a car, note, which I'm very fortunate. So I, I own my own car. Uh, which uh, also covers my rent, and uh, that's pretty much it. My insurance, okay. of course. Yeah. My insurance. So yeah, I'm, I'm covered for six months. So out of that, I have about twelve and a half, maybe fifteen, to invest right. that I'm looking towards investing. Well, if I were you, I would stick to mutual funds. I would stick to low cost mutual funds like the ones at Vanguard, and I would stick to. Uh, uh, mutual funds that invest in what they call large cap companies, big name, large capitalization companies, the the now, McDonald's of the world, the Exxon right. Mobiles of the world, the big now, can ones. I, can I also find this at bankrates.com? No, bankrate.com is for finding low interest rates oh, for, for loans or high interest rates for deposits. I understand. I understand. It's great for that. But uh, good mutual funds can be found at Morningstar.com. You have to pay, I think, $129 a year for that best money you ever spent. Mm. Hey, Tom, I appreciate your advice, man. And you gotta, you gotta, you gotta stay on man. Uh, hard hits. Uh, what they're about to face in the future, in the future of their lives, man. I appreciate what you've been doing, man, and keep it strong. Take me out, Thank Kobe you. style, Tom. Here, I'll take you out, Kobe style, right now. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. You're a beast in my heart. Oh. You're the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. one 800 800 tom is our telephone number. Tough day on the stock market today. The market dropped 508 points. And I know the little ladies couldn't care less. I'm looking at the screen right now. There's not one female caller. It's all guys. But this is going to affect your job. This is going to affect your retirement savings. This is going to affect your ability to get a car loan and a mortgage. Good luck to you getting a mortgage. If you have questions or you want to comment on this, now is the time. Like it. Like 1 800 5800 Tom. Like 1 800 5800 866. Thank you so much for not having any. Any time, dear. It's the Tom Likey Show. It's the Tom Likey Show at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. 
That is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. The worst day on Wall Street in seven years. The Dow Jones average drops 504 points. Financial institutions with names even you would know. Lehman Brothers. Bankrupt. Merrill Lynch sold itself to Bank America for a song. And then the insurance company AIG. The market fears it won't be able to raise enough cash. And can you imagine uh, how much uh, AIG is going to have to pay off for Hurricane Ike? Oh, my. This is going to affect you, whether you like it or not. So, of course, I'm uh, throwing caution to the wind and, and talking to you about it. At one 800 800 tom Zach on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Zach. How you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah, same with me. We're short the market today in long bonds. It was a beautiful day. Good day for you. Yes, it was. And, and folks, if you can hear Tom's voice, you, you better listen up. You better listen up good. Today was probably, in my opinion, the biggest change in the market since the Great Depression. Uh, huge day today. Enormous day in what happened when, what went down today. What happens now, Zach? Uh, I see you on the screen. You're a hedge fund manager. That's correct. New, tell, 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 everybody, tell everybody what a hedge fund is. Yeah, a hedge fund is essentially a, what we run, at least as a commodities hedge fund. So our goal is to invest in commodities, corn, cotton, crude oil, uh, a variety of different instruments. And we trade a lot of different things for clients. So essentially a hedge fund just gives the opportunity to trade a number of different things uh, through one structure. That's what we do. Right. Now tell the average person listening who thinks this is not interesting or not important how a story like this, Wall Street – uh, firms going out of business, going bankrupt, being bought, or uh, the fact that the Dow Jones average is down uh, 504 points. How does this affect the average person? This affects everybody, Tom, and you, and you have the nail hit right on the head. I mean, people, you have to think, a, a firm of 158 years went out of business today. A firm of nearly 90 years was bought today. Financial institutions are disappearing left and right, and unfortunately, what's come home to roost is people using their homes as credit cards for too many years, creating too much debt, is now coming back and you know, biting you in the butt. You've got Chrysler not writing leases on cars anymore. You've got the world changing. And the fact of the matter is, is that housing prices are continuing to fall. It is harder and harder to get loans on anything nowadays. And if you don't think it's going to affect you, uh, just wait. You think today was bad? In my opinion, just wait for tomorrow and just, just try to get, like you say, Tom, you have it perfectly. Just try to get a car loan. Just try to get a housing loan. It's just not going to happen, and it's going to continue to get worse. And if you don't think this affects you, first off, I think you're missing one of the best opportunities to be looking as a buyer, but also you're, you're, you're going to miss it. You're going to get hit by a truck if you don't see what's coming. Uh, anybody who has cash right now, by the way, to do anything is, yeah. is in a really good position. They're in a great position, and you've also got to do something with your cash because, remember, that the dollar continues to fall and continues to devalue against major market currency. So, folks, if you're sitting with literally dollars under your bed, if you're one of those people that walked into Washington Mutual or Wells Fargo and pulled your money out and stuck it under your mattress, uh, it's about the worst time to do that. And, Tom, you always say your adage is when there's blood in the streets that you're, you're buying – we're almost there, but folks, it's, it's going to get a lot rougher and a lot uglier before it gets better because, yeah, AIG's next. Who comes after that? We just looked at the U.S., what happens to Barclays in the U.K., what happens to, to, to German banks, European banks around the world. It's going to get a whole lot uglier before it gets better. Yeah, Europe is a year behind us. I was in Europe in that window where uh, the United States was in terrible condition and getting worse, and the euro was a dollar sixty. And uh, they were uh, uh, acting fat and happy uh, in England, in Italy, in France, all places I was in last year. And, and now they have gotten to where we were last year. Well, that is my baby. I mean, that is what I trade. The currencies, the, the commodities, that's what we trade. And you have to remember that, that our federal government, our Federal Reserve, is a lot more aggressive with lending money, like they did with, with the $20 billion to AIG today, like they're going to do when they cut rates tomorrow, which I believe. And you've got to remember that the ECB, is the, the European bank, the European equivalent of our Fed, is not active. So you think it's bad here? It's going to get a lot worse there, and it's going to last three to four times longer in Europe than it does here because their government doesn't come in to bail out companies like ours does. They let them fail. And by the way, I think that's what our country ought to be doing, and I, I don't understand why we're not. Well, you know, like they said today, and there was a great, great thing said today, that if, if Bear Stearns had been let 
fail instead of uh, instead of been rescued by the government, there's a pretty good chance that Lehman would not have gone out of business today. The problem is, banks are not owning up to the crap that they have on their balance sheets, and until the banks really own up and say, you know what, we've got to value all of this stuff, all of this what they call level three or tier three assets, until they really own up and say that that what they've got on their books is junk, it's not going to get better. And and they, they've got to be held accountable, and they've got to figure out how to make it, uh, you know, essentially how to how to be truthful. And how to tell everybody that they don't have as much money as they say they do. And until that happens, and until housing prices find the bottom, folks, it's going to get uglier and uglier. Yes. So I think the uh, best thing for people to do is have as much cash in hand as possible. Like you say, six months of savings, six months of living, because, you know, again, as a commodities trader, uh, yes, crude oil is down an extreme level from the highs of nearly $150 a barrel, but you've got to remember that corn prices, soybean prices, although they're down, they're still inflated. So the Fed... They cut rates tomorrow, which I think they will, and they continue to cut rates. The price of everything that you deal with here, the price of your lumber, the price of your corn and your cotton, should continue to move up. And what that tells you is your cost of living is going to go up, and your wages are going to go down. Or you know what? Like you say, in a lot of cases, disappear. So you need to have money. You need to have reserves because nobody's going to be lending it to you, especially with no job and, and no income stream. So people, if you're listening to this, listen to every word Tom says because he has got this thing nailed. Thank you, Zach. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate the call. Hedge fund manager there, folks. What can I tell you? 29 years old. He knows what he's talking about. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Mario on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? I'm doing okay. Hey, Tom. I had a question for you. Uh, I'm glad you brought up the subject. Uh, I actually just got a job with IndyMac. And I want to know how you feel about that. I mean, should I feel secure about my job or... Should I also have something where I might, you know, might get laid off or, I mean, what's going on with the, with the actual company? Well, uh, the good news for you is that uh, the federal government took over IndyMac. Okay. So IndyMac used to be known as IndyMac Bank, and it seems like a subtle change, but it's now called IndyMac Federal Bank. Yeah, that's and what I was thinking. I thought it was bought out by the government, but, I mean, I wasn't really too sure about it. The government and has taken it over. And we'll pr proceed to try to find a buyer who will okay. buy the bank. But in the meantime, it's being operated by the FDIC. So right now, I mean, jobs are pretty secure, right? Uh, no job is secure, but oh. uh, there's no reason not to go to work tomorrow. Uh, you okay. should go to work. Yeah. All right, Tom, I always wanted to make sure. I just didn't know what was going on with the company for sure. Uh, and by the way, I'm an amateur, okay? I'm just a layman who reads a lot. So, you know, uh, read the paper. Uh, keep yeah. your eyes open. Definitely. Okay? Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Think people don't even know. They don't know how much this is going to affect them. They're not even aware anything's going on. 1-800-5800-TOB is our telephone number. Julio on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's going on, Tom? Not much, Julio. Just, uh, well, I just had a quick question for you. Um, I'm actually a math major. Uh, you're, you're, wait, your phone, wait, wait, your phone cut out. You're a what? I'm a finance major. A finance major, okay. Yes, and, uh, but the thing was that I invested, uh, last, uh, I've been investing on, uh, well, I invested on Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae for over, I'll say, two months already. How many and, other investments do you have? Well, at the time, I just had those. Well, that, that, this is oh. why they tell you to diversify your investments. Yes, that is why. It, it's never a good idea to be invested in one or two stocks. That's a bad idea. And you're a student of this? Yes, I am. Well, I, well, I, I didn't know, listen. I don't know who you oh, did, did your professor tell you that was a bad idea? Uh, I actually didn't talk to anybody about it. I just did it on my own. And what made you think, knowing what was happening with the mortgage business and the housing business, what made you think that was a good investment? Well, the thing was that, you know, uh, for the 52-week high, Fannie and Freddie have been, you know, where they're up there, they were close to about $80, right? And they went as low as 2 something 250 260 There's a reason. Wait, wait. There's a reason for that. No, I understand yet. Of course. But then articles started coming out, uh, journals were, you know, I was reading the Wall Street and they were saying, uh, individuals were saying that they weren't going to need the government help anymore. And as soon, as soon as that got published, you know, the stocks went, started going up. So I said, you know what, I'm going to invest. Whoever wrote that was wrong. Yes, it was. 
And you can't base your investment decisions on one article you read somewhere or one it quote. One. From it a was person. actually a few. Well, wow. yeah, and the other thing is, obviously, had you had uh, uh, this investment as no more than 5 or 10% of your portfolio, which is what the experts recommend, this would not have been such a big loss for you. Yes, that's right. But, but, I was but that I was you, played, you played Wall Street like it was Las Vegas. Yes, I did. I was trying to make, uh, I guess, quick money, and I did. I, I made a gain about two grand in about a week. But over you made weekend, nothing. No, you made nothing. <laughs> that, that what weekend, you made was on paper. You made nothing. You lost everything. No, of course, yeah. But over that weekend, you know, I had about five hundred bucks. But you had nothing. You only had that money if you sold the stock at that time, which you didn't. Which I didn't. Yes. By the course. way, why did you invest in both of them? They both do the same thing. Um, I actually invested, uh, I had about most of my money in Freddie, and I just invested, uh, you know, about a grand in Fannie. And, uh, you know, I was just, I guess, I was trying to make uh, quick money, and I made a bad decision at the time. Yeah, you did? And you called why? No, I just wanted to see, and now uh, I still have those shares, and I know that, you know, they're going, uh, they're real low now. But my question is, if you think they're going to get even lower, or, you know, I should just send them now, send them tomorrow, and, you know, I, just... I'm not an expert. If you have a financial professional, you should go there. I, as an amateur, would say that you should get whatever you can get and get out. But that's just me. It's the Tom Likas Show.